Hey guys, it's me, Carrie. I'm getting buzzed today. I am in a really super shitty mood. Um, my depression and anxiety are kicking my ass to levels that they haven't in, I want to say, probably about a good four or five years at least. Um, I wear this Hope necklace around my neck, you guys. You've probably noticed it. I wear it almost all the time. The only time I take it off is if I really want to switch out to another necklace and I'm concerned that it's going to get tangled. This lotus I'm wearing right now does tangle with it, but not always so badly because it's much longer than this one. But I wear this Hope necklace because on December, not December, on August 21st, 2012, was the first time of many, many subsequent times that I read my now dear friend Kristen Johnston's book, Guts, The Endless Follies and Tiny Triumphs of a Giant Disaster, subtitle. But yeah, it's, it's Guts, and it's an amazing book, and it chronicles a lot of Kristen's struggles with her addiction and depression and self-esteem and things that pretty much anyone that's watching this channel can probably relate to. I can't recommend this book more highly. I fucking paid for both copies I have. Actually, no, that's not true. I paid for my hardcover copy, and then I got a soft cover copy from my dear friend Patrice as a gift because a bunch of us that are pals of Kristen's, or were at the time, I should say. I know of several who are no longer her pals, but we were actually mentioned in the acknowledgments, which was so 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 super meaningful to me and is one of the dearest kindest things anyone has ever done but yeah if you buy the soft cover version of the book and you see carrie m in the acknowledgements that would be yours truly but um kristen's not paying me to endorse her book or any shit like that she's just my dear friend who i love so so much and i miss and she needs to call me even though we both hate talking on the phone she needs to text me i'm gonna text her probably in a little while and tell her that but um but yeah, we both hate talking on the phone. But I, I love her to bits and her book truly, even if she wasn't my friend, she became my friend as a result of my reading the book and loving the book and reaching out to her on social media. And over the course of the past five years, we've gotten to know each other very, very well. And um, we've only met once in person and the circumstances of that evening were not what we expected, but we didn't get to like hang out like we wanted to. There was a lot of shit going on in her life at that moment. But she's very private, and I would never, ever, ever reveal any of her business, because that's her business. That's exactly why it's her business and not mine. But anyway, um, but I love her so much, and her book is absolutely, like, literally life-changing. Please, 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 if you trust my judgment in anything at all, and you want to read a book that will help inspire you and make you feel like there's hope out there, <laughs> hope, um, read a book. But yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, I, this for the first time since I read that book, which was the day I declared my recovery from depression and anxiety beginning, um, this is the first time since then, well, no, it's not the first time since then, it's probably the second time since then, summer of 2013, I want to say, or fall, no, it would have to have been... No, it would have to have been the fall of 2012. I don't know. I can't even fucking remember right now. But there was a period of time after Chris and I met that I was in a really, really bad, deep, dark place and um, was contemplating um, inpatient treatment if I could afford it, which, of course, I couldn't, but um, it was something that I thought would be useful to me. And needless to say, it didn't happen because I couldn't afford it. But um, I, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. I went to my um, my GP, and who, who has known me since I was like 12 years old. My mom paid way too much out of pocket because I had no health insurance and said, look, my daughter's been off her antidepressants for years. She was trying to have a kid. She found out she can't because her organs or her whatever, her um, hormones are all fucked up. I was never given a specific reason why I'm infertile other than they started off in the phone conversation. The phone conversation, mind you, they didn't say, 
we need you to come in so we can give you a follow-up to the blood work on why you can't get pregnant. They told me over the phone, some dumb office worker, not even my gynecologist, that there was some issue with my progesterone levels being off and I kind of tuned her out because it became like Charlie Brown teacher voice, wah, 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 when she started in on the whole, we highly recommend that you see a fertility specialist because at the time we had like, you know, no health insurance. So that wasn't going to happen. I was... I want to say 2012, so I was 39 years old. I was already, like, the, you know, that window of opportunity was already getting smaller and smaller, and we were piss-ass broke, so, I mean, it really probably wouldn't have been the best idea for us to get pregnant anyway, but um, I wasn't able to, and um, I had stopped my meds because we were trying to get pregnant, and I went to this horrible, 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 horrible nurse practitioner. I think that was her title because I couldn't see a doctor because again, no insurance and that was who I could afford. That would, you know, basically took pity on me at like the poor people clinic. And um, she had no bedside manner, was a total twat and basically said to me, oh, well, you can't be on antidepressants if you're trying to get pregnant. That could harm the baby. Meanwhile, hello, I could have been off antidepressants, gotten pregnant and fucking offed myself while pregnant because I was not on my meds. Um, I mean, it's a very personal decision to those of you out there if you are pregnant or intend to get pregnant and you are on antidepressants, whether or not you choose to take them. Clearly, don't take any advice from me because I know, like, legit nothing about anything. Ta seek a doctor's advice, but um, many doctors will tell you, no, that's ridiculous. You should stay on your, on your meds because it's safer for you and your fetus, unborn baby, whatever you want to call it, to not want to kill yourself while you're pregnant. So, um... But anyway, so I went off my meds and I went with my mom basically hysterical to this doctor like I'm really ready to like say what I need to say to get 5150 which if you're not aware is when you, people are usually involuntarily committed for psychiatric treatment but I, I, I know I know how shit works and if I if I basically told a medical doctor I intend to harm or kill myself chances are they would have been calling and I would have had a rubber room you know pretty damn quickly and at that point I really wanted one because I didn't want to deal with life or reality or facing any responsibilities and um that yeah that I, it was sometime I don't know it was sometime in 2012 I'm thinking but no because I can't remember if it was before or after my brother died my brother died on December 21st 2012 no you know what no it wasn't it was fucking 2012 it was before my brother died because my husband and I um we're dealing with some shit. And I came to visit my mom here in New York. We were living in Florida at the time, my husband and I. Came to visit my mom here in New York. And no, that's when it was. It was the fall of 2012, before my brother died and things got even worse. And my husband lost his second job in two years because of a company going out of business. And things got even worse. But um, no, it was the fall of 2012. And I'd only known Kristen for, I want to say maybe two, three months. And even back then that girl was like ready to give me the shirt off her back and help me out. But, um, I'm not that person. I, I, I don't often ask for help. And when it's offered, I generally refuse because in spite of all of my many flaws, I'm proud in that regard. I don't want to ask for handouts. I don't want to accept things. I don't want to be beholden to anybody. I don't take loans from anybody ever. I legit never use credit cards because I don't even want to be beholden to the credit card company to pay them back. I, um, if I can't pay cash for something, I don't need to have it. I've never charged. I mean, I've had credit cards. I've charged things in my life. But I want to say, other than to keep chase visa from closing my credit card because it was inactive for three years and they were ready to kick me to the curb i used my chase visa once last month and i called them and begged them please don't close my account because i have a good credit limit i obviously if i ever do charge i pay my bill like the following month if not even before the bill comes so um but I wanted to have that for, you know, emergencies in case of a rainy day. But if not for that, I mean, I don't charge even on a credit card. I don't like to owe anybody anything. So um, when Kristen generously offered to help me with what I was going through, I said, you know, thank you, but no thank you. I, I will never, I will never feel comfortable taking anything from you, even as a loan. Um, but yeah, that's just how I roll. And let me get a little more beverage here. 
I know that's so attractive when you just see my head and my, um, I don't know, whatever. But um, this is a rambly, like, saga anyway. I'm going to probably regret that I'm even posting this. But I'm, I'm not going to regret it. And I am going to post it because I'm always very honest with you guys anyway. Whether I'm sober or a little bit buzzed like I am right now. Um, I'm 100%... A straight shooter I'm not gonna bullshit you guys on anything if my life is is good which you know doesn't happen all that often but if my life is good I'm gonna shout that off the rooftops like I do when I get friend mails or something awesome happens and, and you guys see that emotion that's genuine um, when I'm in a state like I am right now where I'm super 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 depressed and anxious and feeling completely useless and worthless I'm gonna share that with you too because Again, that's how I roll. I'm, I will never, I will never bullshit you guys, ever, ever. That's just how I am in life. I will not bullshit anybody. Um, I have two really dear friends, Jen and Jackie, and a little over a year ago, we went to Dave and Buster's, which if you guys are not familiar with, is a super fun place where you can get drinks and eat food and play video games and it's super super fun and there's no way in hell if you go and you want to eat and drink like more than like a french fry and a glass of water you're going to get out of there for less than like 30 40 bucks and chances are much more than that because they're one of those shitty places that doesn't even put prices on their drink menu which i think is so scumbaggy because they just take advantage of you like you know oh well you know they want to get their buzz on they're just going to pay whatever they need to pay and their drinks are like nine ten dollars a piece if you don't go during happy hour which is outrageous to me um, this six pack of these Jed's black cherry things were like $9 and I'm sorry, but if I can get nine drinks or six drinks for $9 in the safety of my own home where I don't have to worry about, you know, obviously I don't drink and drive, but worry about being out in public and getting my drink on and having to tip somebody. I'm sure as hell going to do this before I'm going to go to Dave and Buster's and spend $9 on one drink, but I digress. What a surprise. But anyway, um... Jen and Jackie both are like normal functioning people that have jobs, so they can afford to take a night out at Dave & Buster's every now and then, and I sadly cannot. I did it then. I'm pretty sure that Jen kicked in some of the money to support my night, and I literally went on austerity budget. I generally don't eat or I order an entree where the girls typically get an app and an entree and a dessert, and I will drink like a drink or I'll say fuck it I'll eat before I go and I'll have like two drinks and I'll play some games and I'll still get out there and it'll be 30 bucks but anyway um Jen posted a really cute picture of her of myself and her um last year at Dave and Buster's and tagged Jackie in it too because it was the three of us girls and um mentioned how much fun it was and it was it was super super fun and like they started talking back and forth with each other about how we really need to go again and it fucking sucked for me to have to say I would love nothing more but my situation hasn't changed since a year ago I don't work I don't have any income coming in and you know that's partly my fault I guess because I haven't found a way to maintain a job as well as mental illness and not want to run out in traffic like I said as I as I wanted to when I had my last job in 2010 um this was literally a cashiering job at a grocery store I made it through three days of training I made it through one night of actual work and every morning before I went in even for training was my husband was met with about an hour and a half of hysterical sobbing, screaming, me in the fetal position going, I would rather run out into the fucking four lane highway than go to this job. That is how fucking scared and anxious and like ridiculously overwhelmingly fearful of doing this I am. So I made it through four days and then I just simply didn't show up for the next day of work, which is so chicken shit. But I didn't even call. I didn't even call. I just simply didn't show up. I said, well, I worked there for one day, technically. Like, they're going to give a shit. But then, of course, I had to go in to pick up my paycheck for the three days of training and the one day's work. And that was awfully fun after I behaved like such a coward. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. You know, we all live with regrets. And that's one of mine. But, yeah, here we are in 2017. 
and all I'm doing in my life that could potentially maybe at some point earn me the slightest bit of income is this channel. And I'm pretty sure I may be getting a little bit of pay for this channel starting tomorrow, as a matter of fact. I'm trying to figure out how this crazy program called Google AdSense works that allows people to earn an income through a YouTube channel. As far as I know, once you've earned $100 in ad revenue, they keep the first 100 because, you know, naturally, why shouldn't they? I mean, they did nothing, but, you know, they keep the first $100 in ad revenue. And then once you have passed that plateau of $100, everything that you earn in a month is supposedly yours. As of today, I was at a hundred and almost forty dollars, I think. So if I am correct, they cut you off on the 15th of a month. So I would have been cut off on June 15th. Everything over a hundred dollars I had earned as of June 15th, I believe, is supposed to be direct deposited to me tomorrow, the 21st. They always cut you off on the 15th. They always pay you on the 21st. It remains to be seen. Knowing my fucking luck, I fucked something up or they fucked something up and I won't get anything. But if things go the way I'm hoping that they will go, I will actually have maybe like a direct deposit in my checking account tomorrow of like $35, which is like pathetic for a 44 year old woman to say that's the first income I've earned in seven years, but it would be the first income I've earned in seven years. So I'm trying to be happy about it. I'm trying to be proud of myself because yes, $35 is certainly better than $0. I've made efforts to try to earn money other ways, selling off some of my duplicate lip balms in my collection on eBay, and I legit listed the same set. I'm I'm telling you guys because, you know, we're, we're friends here. I listed 14 fucking brand new lip smackers for a whopping grand total of $5.99 and three bucks to ship, which doesn't even compensate me for the cost of my fucking padded mailer to send it to the, to the buyer. And it got not one bid and I listed it and relisted it twice. So three total listings, 14 lip smackers for six, for six bucks at $9, technically what? $8.99, including shipping. And that's not even counting the fact that I'd be losing money from eBay and PayPal. But that's how desperate I was to try to make some money. And nobody bid, because that is how my life works. My husband and I tried a yard sale a couple months, a month, a couple months ago, I don't remember. And over the course of two days, I think we made $100, if that and for all the hard work and sitting out in the sun for eight hours, like two days in a row, I mean, our anniversary, we spent our 13th wedding anniversary sitting out in the sun, having a yard sale, trying to make money. And I think over the course of two days, we earned a hundred bucks. I mean, that's just, yes, it's a hundred bucks we didn't have before, but wow, seriously. So over 16 hours uh, earning a hundred bucks, that's far less than minimum wage. And granted, yes, we sat, other than when we showed people in the driveway the stuff we had and answered questions or whatever, but I don't know. I just, I, just, I, I just can't figure it out. I just can't figure anything out. I just can't figure out in the grand scheme of things why, um, why some people are born sick, be it, you know, mental illness, or obviously there are things far worse, you know, God, you know, I can't even wrap my mind around the suffering of like children born with HIV or with cancer or God, you know, I mean, um, believe me, I'm not trying to throw a, a pity party for myself. I know there are people far, 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 far worse off than I am that wouldn't be sitting in an air conditioned kitchen right now, albeit in their mother's house where they don't even pay rent because they can't afford that. But um, there are people that are living on the streets. There are people that are literally dying on the streets that have nothing. So believe me, I know that in comparison, these are such first world problems, it's not even funny. But you know what? This is my channel. This is where I can vent. And right now I'm in the mood to vent to you guys because I think that some of you can relate to what I'm going through. And I would certainly hope that those of you who can't specifically relate to it can at least empathize with it. Um, 
I can't deal with ugliness. Any ugly comments, obviously, you'll be deleted and blocked. I don't think that that needs to be said, but it's happened to me in the past on other social media and occasionally on here. But um, it's not worth it. It's, it's not worth you doing it. Find somebody else to troll because I'm not having it. I just am not. Um, but, yeah. So, I don't know. I just felt like yammering with you guys a little bit while I get my buzz on and I know my cheeks are really ruddy you probably think I'm a lot more buzz than I am I've actually only had two and a half drinks which is not very much although like I said everything's relative and I don't drink all that often you know once every couple weeks when I get together with my girlfriends I have a couple glasses of wine that's usually it but right now I'm in the mood to not be clear-headed and God help me if this video is in any way triggering to anybody who is recovering from alcoholism or addiction. Please, please, please forgive me for that. That is, couldn't be farther from my intention. Um, so many of the people I love are in recovery. Um, as I've said, ad nauseum, alcoholism killed my brother at 36. Um, yeah, he had pancreatitis. You don't get pancreatitis generally unless you drink to excess and my brother declared first declared his substance abuse and alcohol issues at 15. so if he was declaring it at 15 he was already suffering for a while before that so you're talking even though he died at 36 you're talking about 21 years plus of alcoholism and addiction um he did do drugs too but that wasn't nearly as big of an issue as the booze as far as i know I remember going to a family session um, when he was in an inpatient program and him ad admitting to everyone in the room. And again, I don't, I would never share this if he was alive, but because he's gone now, I'm not breaking anonymity, but he shared in this room that he had tried everything up to and including crack. And I live in the tiniest, most freaking like Pollyanna, Mayberry-ish fucking little tiny, tiny Long Island town. We're not wealthy here. I, I would consider my town middle class pretty much. I personally consider myself lower middle class, if that, or upper lower class, if that's a thing. Um, but I, I was like, oh my God, you actually like even would know where to buy crack? Like that's how naive I was. But um, I know I have many, many people that are dear to me in my life that suffer from addiction and are in various stages of recovery. So please, please, God help me. I'm not trying to trigger anybody. Um, I hope that if that's an issue for you, you turn this video off the minute you saw me grab a bottle of booze because that, that would kill me to think that I triggered anyone in any way, shape, or form. But again, I, I, I have an addictive personality. I'm certainly addicted to buying shit. But um, alcoholism is not an addiction for me. So therefore, I feel that it's okay to imbibe every now and then. But yeah, okay. I'm going to cut this off now. I'm not going to cut myself off, but I'm going to cut this video off. I hope these rambles were in some way, shape, or form meaningful to you or something that can help you realize that you're not alone in your struggles, wherever they may be, be it mental health, physical health, financial issues, self-esteem issues. Um, I hope that more than anything else, I hope that this was not harmful to anybody. And I hope that those of you who like me, <laughs> it's weird for me to even say, cause I can't imagine anyone liking me, but like me or care about me, um, know that I'm safe firstly and um, haven't lost any respect for me because of the fact that I'm shooting a buzzed video because again I'm doing it because I trust you guys and I love you guys and I feel safe with you and um, I hope you feel safe with me but anyway yeah that's it shutting up now be back soon with more stuff bye